Hi, this is a video on how to calculate the resultants on uh, non-concurrent force systems. Um, non-concurrent forces is a topic on the mechanical principles um, and on the BTEC level 3 diplomas in engineering it falls under uniform mechanical principles that's on the, on the QCF which are the current programs but the new programs which are the NQF or RQF programs it will come on the unit 1 engineering principles. Uh, before we can learn about um, non-concurrent force systems we need to learn um, concurrent forces about concurrent force systems so that's where we'll be starting off today. This is a concurrent force system as you can see all the forces are acting at the same point uh, that's what makes it concurrent. Uh, you have F1 <laughs> F2 and F3. Uh, each force has got a magnitude which is a, a amount to it and it's got a direction which is indicated by the angle. Um, in this method we'll be using the absolute angle so even though this is 20 measured from here we'll be calculating all our angles from this point here. So this angle here will be 30. The angle of F2 will be uh, measured all the way from here so it's going to be um, 180 which is angle uh, point uh, on a line uh, on a straight line um, take away the 20 so it's going to be 160 all the way up to here and the angle of F3 is going to be measured all the way around here so it's going to be uh, 180 up to here and then you add this bit which is 90 that's 270 or you could do 360 which is the angle at a point uh, and take away this angle here which is 90 so that gives us 270 uh, so that's why I put 160 here and 270 for F3 and uh, in the method we'll be using we will be breaking each force into its horizontal component and its vertical component so using our trigonometry we have a, a right angle triangle the horizontal components all the horizontal components are going to be the value of the force uh, multiplied by the cause of the angle and the vertical components here are going to be uh, calculated by the value of the force which is each of these multiplied by the sine of the angle so and I put the, I put the formula here just to remind us so horizontal force cause angle and the vertical force sine angle we're going to be using the same force and the same angle for each row So if we start off um, with F1 here, uh, the formula for this will be 8 cos 30 and that will give us 6.8 to two decimal places and uh, this will be 8 same value sine now instead of cos but same angle 30 and that will be 4.0 so to two decimal places because of the space uh, ideally we should walk to three or four decimal places for a uh, better a more um, precise result. Um, here it's going to be using the same so method it's going to be 6 cos 160 which will give us minus 5.64 on our calculator to two decimal places and uh, here we have uh, 6 sine 160 which will give us 2.05 um, here will be 10 cause 270 
put that in the calculator we'll get zero and this will be 10 sine 270 we'll put that in the calculator we'll get minus 10 so then we add up all the horizontal components and um, to two decimal places this will give us 1.29 because that is a negative and um, to two decimal places here it will give us minus 3.95 good so so these are our total horizontal and our total vertical now we need to recombine them so if we go back to our trigonometry we have uh, our adjacent um, uh, we have our adjacent um, side and we have our opposite side which is adjacent and opposite we want to combine it to get the uh, the value of the uh, the resultant which will be uh, the hypotenuse so simply the formula to use at all times will be this the resultant will be calculated by the total f h square plus the total f v square and then the square root of that so it's going to be take 1.29 square which is this plus and then bracket uh, minus 3.95 and that is square as well and then take a square root of that if we do put that in our calculator we will come up with 4.15 newtons okay now we need to know the angle what is going to be the angle of our resultant so the angle of our resultant is going to be measured by tan so let's say angle which is theta is going to be the inverse tan of the vertical component over the horizontal component so coming back to trig what we're trying to do is to find this angle so which would be the tan of this angle will be opposite over hypotenuse which is uh, the vertical over the horizontal and that's why we have vertical over horizontal here so we're finding the inverse of that tan to get the angle and if we put this in our calculator we will get this is minus 71 point nine zero degrees so what that means and I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit about um, the uh, the, re the sketching now is what it means is if we have these three forces acting like this their equivalent force or the equivalent effect will be found from using uh, but will be found from this resultant which will be a force of uh, 4.15 newtons and it's acting at an angle of 71.90 degrees uh, if we look at this we can see this is positive and this is negative so um, what, what that means is um, the quadrant is going to fall in is going to have a positive horizontal which is this and a negative vertical so it's going to be somewhere down here and it's going to be an angle of 71 degrees so our resultant is going to be you know a positive horizontal negative vertical and it's going to be at 71 degrees so it's going to 
for somewhere like this not to scale it's going to have an angle of minus 71 degrees we don't really need to put that minus here it just shows that it's in uh, this quadrant and this is our result so I'm going to say FR and it's a value of 4.15 not to scale okay Here is another example. So at this point, I would like you to uh, pause the video um, and uh, try to solve it on your own. And uh, you just using the same method, exactly the same thing, and then uh, we'll see uh, what results you get. Um, using the same method, you should get exactly the same results as uh, we'll get just in a minute. okay these are the results uh, that I've got so as you can see um, we have three forces here we have F1 uh, F2 and F3 uh, sorry it's the the numbers are the wrong way around here but you can see F1 is 50 so that should be F1 actually 50 uh, and it's an angle of 40 F2 is 80 an angle of 20 that's f2 so that should be f1 and that should be f2 it doesn't really matter it doesn't affect the results and the f3 is uh, 40 an angle of uh, 240 now where do we get these angles remember 20 we're measuring the angles from here 20 and then that will be 40 measuring from here but for this one we have to go all the way around this way so we're doing all the way around this way so that's going to be three, 360 which is an angle at a point and we take away this 120 so that's why we have 240 here so we're using the absolute uh, the absolute angles from here we put this in our calculator we've got 80 cos 20 um, 50 cos 40 and um, 40 cos 240 and uh, exactly the same thing here but we're just changing the cos to sign here um, the answer I've got here is 9.4776 to four decimal places and 2.8600 to um, four decimal places. Once more is equal to the square of FA total. the square of the vertical components total and then the square of the okay so that will be equal to 9.093 oh, rather 93.4776 square plus 224.86 square and then the square root of all this uh, if we put that in our calculator we will get um, 96.73 newtons to two decimal places and uh, the angle will be the inverse tan of the vertical which is 24.86 over the horizontal and 
and that will give us an angle of 14.89 degrees to two decimal places. So looking at the results, both results are positive. So that means that the um, resultant is going to be in the fourth quadrant with a positive horizontal and a positive vertical. And the angle that is going to be 14. So it's going to be around about here. Not to scale. So that's about 14. About eight nine degrees, and um, the resultant has a value of ninety six point seven three newtons. Okay, so this brings us to the end of video one. Um, here we've covered how to work out the resultant of a concurrent force system. So um, just by splitting the forces into the horizontal components, vertical components, adding those components up together, and then combining those total results in to, give, to give us the value of the resultant and the angle of the resultant. Uh, th in the next video, we'll move into non-concurrent forces, and then we'll also do more sketching. What we haven't looked at here is um, the equilibrium force, which will be the force to balance out the resultant. So it will be exactly the same as the resultant, but pointing in the opposite direction. So in order to counterbalance the resultant. Alright, thank you for watching. Any comments, put it in uh, the comments.